Hello viewers and a very warm welcome to the question hour show from the Parliament House Complex, the show where we bring you important unstart questions asked by the members of the Upper House and the replies given by the government in written format. I'm Kriti Mishra and joining me is my colleague Rajat K. Well, thanks Kriti and thanks to your viewers for watching this edition of Question Hour where we get you the latest of the questions and answers given in the Upper House by the ministries and departments. Question hour is a very important tool in India's parliamentary democracy because it gives an opportunity to the members of both houses of parliament, Rajya Sabha and Lok Sabha to seek answers from the government to fix accountability of the government. There are different type of, uh, types of questions, the start questions, the unstart questions and also the short notice ones. Well, the start questions are the ones where answers or the replies are given directly on the floor of the house, whereas unstart are the ones where answers are tabled on the floor of the house at the end of the proceedings of the show. And our show focuses on the unstart questions asked by the members and replies given by the ministries and departments. Now, what is the entire procedure or the process of asking these questions and how these questions ends up at the minister's table and are subsequently answered? Here is a look. A member submits his or her questions at least 15 days before the office of Rajya Sabha chairman. The Rajya Sabha secretariat chooses the questions to be answered through a draw of ballots Separate ballots are held for start and unstart questions. The questions are scrutinized for admissibility under the current rules and precedents. Advanced copies of chosen questions are sent to ministry or departments concerned. The ministry concerns collect information to prepare the reply. The minister concerned reply to start questions on the floor of the house and provides written answers to unstart questions. Up to 160 unstart questions are listed every day in a separate list. So there you saw the procedure and now let's take you through the important unstart questions asked by the members of the upper house during the previous session of parliament or the 252nd session of the Rajya Sabha. So the first question in this edition of the question hour show is from member KP Munusami and this question is to the Ministry of Steel. And the member has inquired about the number of steel plants in the country, whether they are running at the full capacity and if not, the reasons thereof and the steps taken by the government. Well, giving a detailed reply to the query, Minister of Steel Dharmendra Pradhan has given all the details in the annexures about the number of production plants of steel, the production capacity and the optimum utilization made thereof. In the reply, the ministry says that steel is a deregulated sector. The government lays down policy guidelines and establishes the institutional mechanism or structure for creating conducive environment for improving efficiency and performance of the steel sector. In this direction, the government has taken various steps which include domestically manufactured iron and steel products policy for promoting procurement of made in India steel by the government agencies, steel scrap policy to enhance the availability of domestically generated scrap, issuance of steel quality control orders to stop non-standardized steel import and manufacturing, the steel import monitoring system or SIMS for advanced registration of steel imports, Draft framework policy to promote setting up of steel clusters having manufacturing units for value-added steel, ancillaries and capital goods. For ensuring availability of raw material to steel sector, Ministry of Steel has worked closely with Ministry of Mines and Ministry of Coal for auction and restart of expiring iron ore mines, extension of mining leases with steel CPSEs, allotment of coal mines and diversification of coal imports. Consultation of various stakeholders, including industry association and leaders of domestic steel industry to address the issues by taking up the same with concerned ministries and departments of central government and the state government. Consultations with relevant stakeholders, including from railways, defence, oil and gas, housing and civil aviation sector to enhance the overall demand for steel in the country. 
Well, that was a response by Ministry of Steel to the query on the steel productivity and the optimum utilization of the production capacity. Moving on, next question was asked by member Narayan Das Gupta and the member has sought details about free distribution of LPG cylinders across country under PM Ujwala Yojana, especially at the time of COVID-19 pandemic. So this response has been given by Petroleum and Natural Gas Minister Dharmeen Pradhan and the minister says that as part of Pradhan Mantri Garib Kalyan Yojana, a scheme for providing free LPG cylinder refills to all the Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yojana beneficiaries was started and implemented with effect from 1st of April 2020. The scheme was further extended till 30th of September 2020. For those beneficiaries who have been credited with the advance for buying refills but not able to buy the refills till 30th of June 2020. As on 16th of September 2020, 13.57 crore refills have been delivered to Pradhan Mantri Ujwala Yoshna beneficiaries under this scheme. All marketing companies have informed that LPG cylinders purchased by them are manufactured in India and no imports are done. Further, indigenous production of LPG is less than demand, hence OMCs import LPG to meet the deficit to maintain smooth supply of LPG in the country. During April 2020 to June 2020, 44% of the total demand of the country has been met through domestically produced LPG and balance 56% has been met through import. In order to protect the domestic LPG consumers from volatility in the price of LPG in the international market, the selling price of domestic subsidized LPG are modulated by the government. Domestic LPG prices are revised every month in line with international price of LPG with corresponding revision in monthly LPG subsidy under Pehel scheme. Applicable subsidy is transferred directly to the bank account of beneficiary upon purchase of refill at non-subsidized price and subsidy burden is borne by the government. And current retail price of 14.2 kg refill of LPG at Delhi price is rupees 594. And now let's move on to the next question asked by member Sasmit Patra and this question is to the Ministry of Labour and Employment. And the member has asked about the migrant labour situation in the country during the COVID-19 period, whether the government has taken steps to alleviate their pain and what can the government do to address the situation and to ensure improvement in lives and livelihoods of migrant labourers. Well, thanks, Kriti. This is a very important question. The reply was given by Minister of State for Labour and Employment, Santosh Kumar Gangwar. Now, here, before we go to reply, let's also put before our viewers that coronavirus pandemic was a huge, gigantic proportion pandemic. Now, it has caused disruptions across the world, not just in our country, but across the world. And especially the government of India has taken several steps so as to address the economic livelihood and also the safety and security needs of the migrants and especially the safe transportation of the migrants was also one of the schemes along with the livelihood and food security. In a reply the ministry says that COVID-19 has also resulted in migration of large number of workers from destination states to home states. In order to facilitate the smooth migration and redress grievances in respect of wages, during the national lockdown, Ministry of Labour and Employment has set up 20 control rooms across the country. Now, during lockdown, more than 15,000 complaints of workers were resolved through these control rooms and more than 2 lakh workers were paid their due wages amounting to approximately rupees 295 crore. Now, with the process of the unlocking down, many migrant workers have started returning to their, home, uh, to their workplaces in destination states. Approximately 80 crore beneficiaries are being provided additional 5 kg of wheat or rice and 1 kg of preferred pulses free of cost every month till November of year 2020 under provisions of National Food Security Act. Now, in response to Government of India's directions, the state welfare boards have cumulatively dispersed the amount of around 5,000 crore to approximately 1.83 crore, building in other construction workers during the lockdown and thereafter. In addition to this, around 30 lakh building or and other construction workers have also been provided food relief packages. For the benefit of 50 lakh street vendors, the Government of India has also launched Swanidhi scheme to provide them collateral free working capital loan up to rupees 10,000 to resume the livelihood due to COVID-19 pandemic and the lockdown, subsequent lockdown. Apart from the above, various initiatives have been taken by Ministry of Labour and Employment as part of Pradhan Mantri 
गरीब कल्याण योजना एंड आत्मनिर्भर भारत विच इंक्लूड पेमेंट ऑफ ट्वेल्व परसेंट एम्प्लॉय शेयर एंड ट्वेल्व परसेंट एम्प्लॉयज शेयर अंडर एम्प्लॉय प्रोविडेंट फंड और द ई पी एफ टोटलिंग ट्वेंटी फोर परसेंट ऑफ गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया फॉर सिक्स वेज मंथस फ्रॉम मार्च टू ऑगस्ट टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी फॉर ऑल एस्टाब्लिशमेंट्स हैविंग अप टू वन हंड्रेड एम्प्लॉय विद नाइन्टी परसेंट ऑफ सच एम्प्लॉयज अर्निंग लेस देन फिफ्टीन थाउजेंड मंथली वेज प्रोडक्शन इन पी एफ कॉन्ट्रीब्यूशन फ्राम ट्वेल्व परसेंट टू टेन परसेंट ऑफ द वेजेस फॉर वेज मंथ ऑफ मे जून एंड जुलाई टू non refundable covid advance from the pf by amending the epf scheme 1952 advisory to employees association to support employees and workers but not terminating them and not cutting their wages further in order to boost employment and livelihood opportunities for migrant workers returning to villages in the wake of covid 19 outbreak the government of india has launched garib kalyan rozgar abhiyan on 20th of june 2020 The Abhiyan focuses on durable rural infrastructure and providing modern facilities like internet in the villages. Skill mapping of the rural migrant labor is also being done to enhance their employability on the basis of the skills they possess to enable them to work closer to their homes. The Abhiyan involves intensified and focused implementation of 25 target driven works to employ to provide employment and create infrastructure in rural areas of 116 districts of 6 states with resource envelope of rupees 50000 crore apart from this the ministry of women and child development has launched various schemes for migrant workers who have returned to their native places one of the schemes is anganwadi service which has been extended to children of migrant workers ministry of food processing industries have sanctioned 700 food processing and preservation and infrastructure projects in which migrant laborers can get employment To provide employment to migrant workers, Ministry of Transport and Highways has identified the ongoing works, new works for the road construction. Ministry of Steel assisted migrant workers and their families with food packets and face masks and milk powder. The Department of Biotechnology has set up 30 biotech Kisan hub in the country covering all agroclimatic zones, 150 districts including 101 aspirational districts. which will help migrant workers to earn their livelihood through farming and expose them to innovative methods of farming of the high value crops so that was the elaborate reply by ministry of labor and employment now moving on to other question that was asked by member vikas mahatma from ministry of urban and housing affairs the member has sought about the rapid urbanization growth of population and the resources and what is the government policies in this regard so that the resources are well tapped So this response has been given by Housing and Urban Affairs Minister Hardeep Singh Puri and the answer given is in the affirmative. The minister says that the report on Indian Infrastructure and Services 2011 that was given by a high powered committee set up by Ministry of Housing and Urban Affairs has projected that India's urban population would be close to 600 million by the year 2031-32. and an estimated amount of more than 39 lakh crore rupees would be required for setting up the urban infrastructure which would be at the prices of 2009 2010 prices urban development being a state subject creation of urban infrastructure is responsibility of the state governments however the ministry of housing and urban affairs incentivizes states to take up reform measures to strengthen their own resource base as well as encourage them to adopt innovative mechanisms to mobilize funds for development of infrastructure through increased use of public private partnership rationalization of user charges issues of municipal bonds value capture financing the ministry of housing and urban affairs is implementing various missions schemes such as atal mission for regeneration and urban transformation which is amrut smart city mission swachh bharat mission urban pradhan mantri awas yojana urban and urban transport to address the challenges of urbanization and to augment the investment in urban infrastructure so rajat the report projects that india's population urban population would be close right. to 600 million by the year 2031 that requires massive infrastructure investment mm. as far as urban areas are concerned and in fact uh, the member who asked this very pertinent question mr vikas mahatme is joining us on the question hour show Dr Mahatme welcome to Rajya Sabha Television and thank you so much for joining us through this virtual platform. Namaskar. So the government says that around 40 lakh crore rupees would be required for investment in the urban areas in order to serve the people because our population is likely to rise and would be around 600 million by the year 2031. What is your take on government's response? 
Yeah, yeah, it's true that uh, we will be having nearly 60 crore population increase in the urban area. Why it is there? Because of, uh, you know, the job opportunities are more in the cities as well as the uh, education opportunities are also more in the cities. So automatically everybody wants to be in city. and it's a good thing. And our Honorable Prime Minister identified this challenge really. And because of that, many schemes have been implemented. But the most important challenges are also there. The important challenges are there. You can see now, because of this, what has happened? We There is a scarcity of water, drinking water in the cities. There is a traffic jam we regularly see in the cities. Then uh, what we see is the clean air problem is there. Pollution is very high. Garbage prop, uh, challenges are there. So, so many challenges are there because of this. So I think uh, that is very essential that we should uh, try and invest. What type of investment is needed that is also important and that was answered by the Honorable Minister. Uh, the Honorable Minister Adip Singh answered that it will require nearly 40 lakh crores in the coming years. So, so that much amount is of investment because without investment, you cannot uh, do all the infrastructure development. So that much amount, a huge amount will be required for the investment. And I think uh, these are the challenges which are uh, there, but definitely the programs are there and the, uh, the many action has already been started. And I think we will be able to uh, face those challenges and people will be happy to be in the city. The government also talks about several missions, for instance, the Amrut mission, even the smart city mission. Do you think that uh, these would be very important in augmenting the urban infrastructure? Uh, there are uh, smart city, Amrut, and uh, uh, then Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana is also there. So there are, uh, uh, the schemes are already there. So what is most important is the implementation. Urban transport is also there. So. In those utter mission, uh, the for rejuvenation and urban transportation is there. So, what is important is the transportation. If we facilitate the transportation, the traffic jam will not be there. What we see is the new uh, Nagpur today only there was inauguration of uh, uh, we have uh, metro as well as the double decker roads and uh, one of the one of its own kind in Nagpur first time in the country. Uh, that was inaugurated by Honorable Nitin Ji Kadkari. So, these are the things which are needed in smart city. One is the transport, second is the sewage and treatment, and uh, as well as the garbage uh, treatment, as well as the uh, clean air. So, there are uh, certain things. Uh, one is uh, most important for the migrant laborers also was the uh, what is the you, uh, the, you can see where they will be able to stay. And Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana is there for the population, uh, urban population, and it has been started. The houses have been already allotted to many people. I think that will solve the problem of uh, what we call it as Zopadpati, or Pradhan Mantri Awas Yojana solution there are urban transport media and roads as well as water and water is the most important challenge and drinking water safe drinking water uh, this has to be solved through smart city and nowadays if you see if you go in the city the roads are better as well as clean you can see the garbage is less uh, the uh, Swachhata mission is there. So because of that, you'll see there is a competition in the corporation. Lastly, sir, any specific suggestion? I think I have not, uh, with this challenge, I, my personal feeling is that, that uh, we should have uh, something like a small, uh, you can say, uh, city-like thing which has to be developed near the big, big uh, city. Uh, what what is that I can tell you that in Chandigarh if you see uh, it has the city was built up and then the people moved there. Similarly, we need now the township programs. 
not the uh, a big flat schemes uh, come on the road on the suppose 20 floor or something like that and then there is a strain on the road there is a strain on the water pipelines there is a strain on the garbage system there is a strain on the sewage system all this has not been considered only thing is that the fsi and everything has been utilized parking is also they may provide on the fourth second third fourth fifth floor like that but the challenges are many so it's better to have a township which will have a school up to 10th or 12th standard which will have a hospital and then primary ed and all the facilities which are needed open spaces and this township should be developed rather than giving one flat scheme to this or one flat scheme to another person or another uh, entrepreneur because they develop that in a nice way but ultimately other structures which are needed are not developed so township will be a better answer around the cities there should be many multiple townships should be developed so that those who want to migrate to the cities will have good quality houses all the services like cities and the transportation will be there to the main city also so ultimately they will be finding it easy to live and uh, ease of living that will be there so that is my i think all now onward at least we shouldn't uh, promote uh, something like uh, flat schemes we should promote the township program so that uh, this will uh, solve many of our problem secondly is the most important is the investment because when i say that this should be done or that should be done everybody knows that mostly but how will we raise the fund is the most important challenge because unless and until we raise the funds and we bring in investment new things cannot be done well on that note thank you so much for joining us and sharing all those details with us thank you thank you for the opportunity thank you namaskar and let's move on to the next question asked by member samaji chatrapati and this question is to the ministry of home affairs and the member has asked the question on improvement of our efficiency as far as our disaster response is concerned so he's asked whether the government has identified areas which are disaster prone and also the steps taken by the government and how can we improve the efficiency of the concerned agencies well replying to this very important query minister of state for home affairs nityanand rai said the disaster response and mitigation is a continuous process and government of india has taken several steps to enhance the capabilities and also capacity so as to counter the natural calamities The Disaster Management Act 2005 provides the need for mainstreaming disaster risk reduction into developing planning. There have been significant improvement in this multi-hazard monitoring and warning system in recent years. The primary responsibility of undertaking rescue, relief and rehabilitation measures in the event of natural disaster rests with the concerned state governments. The central government wherever required supplements the efforts of state government by providing logistical and financial support in cases of natural disasters of severe nature and beyond coping capacity of the state resources. The Disaster Management Act 2005 mandates such each states to take all measures specified in guidelines issued by Natu- National Disaster Management Authority or the NDMA and such further measures as it deem necessary for expedient for the purpose of disaster management the 15 finance commission have recommended a total corpus of 41373 crore for disaster risk management for the year 2020-21 out of which rupees 28983 crore has been allocated for state disaster risk management fund or the sdrmf and rupees 12390 crore for national disaster risk management While 80% of total corpus has been earmarked for response, 20% have been allocated for mitigation. Setting up of National Disaster Response Force for prompt response and pre-positioning of NDRF in disaster vulnerable areas. The 12 battalions have been strategically deployed across the country. In addition, NDRF teams have been deployed in 28 regional response centers for immediate response. Encouraging states to set up their own dis- state disaster response forces. strengthening of state and district disaster management systems through various schemes of central government capacity building of various stakeholders including state disaster response force of state and union territories by providing training through ndrf 
Government has approved setting up of National Disaster Response Force Academy to provide specialized training in disaster response to NDRF, State Disaster Response Force, Civil Defense and other stakeholders. The Government of India laid down National Policy on Disaster Management 2009 to build a safe and disaster resilient India by developing a holistic, proactive, multi-disaster oriented and technology driven strategy through a culture of prevention, mitigation, preparedness and response. Well, moving on to the next question of this edition of the show that has been asked by member Prabhakar Reddy Webber Reddy from Ministry of Labour and Employment. The member has asked about the aims and objective of Social Security Code that is proposed by the Ministry and the number of workers that will be covered under this initiative of Social Security Code. So, detailed response has been given by Labour and Employment Minister Santosh Gangwar and he says that in line with the recommendations of the Second National Commission on Labour, a Social Security Code has been repaired by amalgamating, rationalising and also simplifying the Central Sector Acts and their provisions. Now, these important acts are the Employees' Compensation Act 1923, the Employees' State Insurance Act 1948, the Employees' Provident Funds and Miscellaneous Provisions Act 1952, the Employment Exchange Compulsory Notification of Vacancies Act 1959, the Maternity Benefit Act 1961, the Payment of Gratuity Act 1972, the Cine Workers' Welfare Fund Act 1981, the Building and Other Construction Workers' Welfare Cess Act 1996, the Unorganized Workers' Social Security Act 2008, the Code on Social Security 2019 has been introduced in the Lok Sabha and referred to the Parliamentary Standing Committee on Labour for Examination, which presented its report to the Speaker. After considering the report of the Standing Committee, the Code on Social Security 2020 was repaired and the Code on Social Security 2019 that was withdrawn from the Lok Sabha and the Code on Social Security 2020 that was introduced in the Lok Sabha and subsequently these important codes were passed by Parliament of India in the previous session. So well, Rata, these were the important questions and answers that we filtered for our viewers in this edition of the Question Hour show. Well, thanks for watching this edition of Question Hour. You can also catch all our programs including Question Hour on the online platform of YouTube and also follow us on the Twitter handle of Rajasabha TV. Thank you. Take care and stay safe.